Microsoft's cloud gaming, also known as Project X Cloud, was released around 22 countries in September last year. But thanks to Australia's she'll be right attitude towards the internet, for international viewers that means nobody bothered to do anything about the creation of the internet, it's taken a little longer for the service to reach our Aussie phones. Cloud gaming basically allows users to connect to a remote Xbox in the cloud so they can stream and play games on their Android devices. Unfortunately, it's not out on iOS just yet due to Apple's strict rules when it comes to game streaming on their platform. More on that soon. So I haven't really been playing a lot of games lately, so I've kind of been neglecting to check my dedicated email for all my video game services. I checked it last week. It turns out I was invited to the Australian preview of the Xbox Cloud Gaming program back in January, and thankfully it's still running. So I figured I'd fire it up and give it a crack. And after a week of playing, I have many thoughts. Here are my thoughts. <laughs> G'day, you're watching Tech Finder. As always, links to all the products we talk about are available in the description below. And if you enjoyed the video, help the channel grow by throwing us a like when we're done. So a little more on how it actually works before I get into how it feels. Your Android phone and controller is essentially connecting to a Microsoft data center running a bunch of Xboxes or Xbox-like computers. Those computers run your game and take all the inputs from your controller and stream footage of that back to your phone. They're currently equipped with hardware from the Xbox One S. So that's tech that's been around for quite a while now, but they'll be upgrading them with the brand new Xbox Series X tech sometime this year. So while it doesn't exactly mean you own an Xbox Series X, you do have access to the latest games on the latest hardware. And that's a pretty exciting proposition in my book. So how do you get it? Well, in the countries that it's live and in Australia once it's out, you'll be able to get the whole service through Game Pass Ultimate, which is only $14.99 a month. Game Pass Ultimate already allows you to download well over 100 games to your Xboxes or PC, many of which are super popular and highly regarded titles. Honestly, I can make an entire video about how good Game Pass is. It's just that good. But now it's getting even better because you can stream games to your phone without purchasing any hardware. Okay, that, that's not entirely true. There's a little bit of hardware that you need and that's a controller. A few games do actually support touch controls. So if you wanna whip out your phone at any time and attempt Minecraft dungeons, you can. But for most games, you'll probably wanna opt for some kind of controller and a mobile phone. And also some kind of clip so you don't have to hold both your controller and your phone at the same time. If you wanna get super fancy and think you'll be doing this kind of thing a lot, you can actually get side-mounted controllers to make your mobile phone into some kind of Nintendo Switch device. Yeah, the more I look at this, the more I wanna use one. Comment below if you wanna see a review of the Razer Kishi and I'll try and get my hands on one. Yeah, and then I'll probably give it to one of you. Basically, if it has Bluetooth and you can connect it to your phone, then yeah, you can use it to play your games. And that does include the PlayStation controller. So if controlling Master Chief with a DualShock excites you, congrats, you can do that now. There is one more really cool thing I love about this service. It actually carries over your saves from local play sessions. So for example, if you are playing Halo 3 on a PC, you could turn off the PC, leave the house, jump on a bus, whip out your phone, and then continue playing Halo 3 exactly where you left off, but now you're streaming it from a random Xbox in the cloud. Or if we flip that idea, you could potentially test a game out on the streaming service, decide that you really like it, and then jump on your PC or Xbox and download the full thing. But when you turn the game on, you're right where you left off. Overall, with the controller options, the save syncing, and the pretty low price to entry, it seems like Microsoft are really just trying to get as many people on the platform as possible. As many people playing their games as possible. Sounds good to me. All right, let's stop talking. Let's start gaming. Rusty, you should... You start sitting, <laughs> okay? Now I've actually been using this for the last week or so and I have tried out a bunch of different genres of games. I haven't been able to play all 20 that are on the service, but I've tried to keep it to games that have different play styles and different speeds and stuff like that. So there's a whole wide range of games that I've tried to uh, just to see if certain types of games are better for the service or if they're all good. There is one game. There is one game that I've held off playing so I can play it and show you how the whole service works here. It's the Halo Master Chief Collection. Now I have played thousands of hours of Halo in my childhood and teenage and adult gaming career. So I really know how the characters and the game flow feels while I'm playing it. So I feel like that will be a really good test of exactly what the system can offer. Cause I know, I know the game really well, I can feel it. Am I good at the game? 
<laughs> You'll have to watch to find out. Let's jump in. So yeah, once you jump in, um, you are left with this kind of rocket loading screen for a little while because kind of most games seem to take about a minute to load but sometimes it's a bit quicker like then it was only about 30 seconds and then it just jumps straight into the game which is really cool. One thing I did find with playing these games uh, on here is you really want to be wearing headphones hearing the music and audio coming out of your tiny phone speaker for a lot of games that are meant to be kind of like really big sonic experiences um, especially a game like halo and uh, something like forza yeah it's just really doing a disservice to the whole the whole package of the game as an art form so if you can headphones are a must in my opinion so i'm going to join a multiplayer match and see if i can uh see if i can keep up with the other players um social games hey all right so we're playing on a map that uh i know very well and it's also on halo 3 which is the uh, game that i played the most all right first kill oh. yeah so far it feels like turning is kind of the the worst like it's definitely slightly behind um like i can feel I kind of put put turn in and then he kind of turns slightly after but it's 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 close but like it is actually kind of impacting how fast I can react to stuff like yeah yeah, yeah so anytime I input left or right he kind of takes half a second and turns so that is really putting it putting me at a disadvantage here um, Oh, oh god, yeah. Yeah, look, um, <laughs> it's not, it's not ideal. If you weren't someone who had played this for thousands of hours as a kid, a teenager and an adult, you probably wouldn't notice. But for anyone who's played a shooter, um, even a little bit competitively, you'll probably you'll probably not like this. It's like half a second, not even half a second, but that's all the difference when you're playing a game where the point is to shoot each other. You wanna be, you wanna be moving as quick as possible. That's why they sell uh, monitors which have super high refresh rates. So you can be fast. You can see what's going on at all times. Um, yeah, I feel majorly disadvantaged playing on this system. So it's probably not, it's probably not the best system to play a multiplayer shooter on, um, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe if you're really good. I also suck at this game. I haven't played it in years. Oh, uh, <laughs> I played. I, I played for thousands of hours. I didn't say I was good. Yeah, that was a weird experience. Um, it felt kind of strange. It felt almost perfect, but that extra half a second just completely throws you off and just puts you at a huge disadvantage. Okay, I'm gonna play this a little bit more and then come back. So for those of you who don't know, the Halo Master Chief Collection is actually a library of the five first Halo games. When you jump into multiplayer matches, it can actually put you into any of those five games. So when I was playing, I got to try out a match in Halo 2, a match in Halo 3, and a match in Halo Reach. And they're pretty much the ones I know the best anyway, so it was really good to see how they all behaved. Basically, they all behaved exactly the same as the Halo 3 uh, experience, which was, it was slightly far behind enough that I could tell, and it really just was not allowing me to uh, be precise in any way with my um, pointing and shooting. Uh, it was always just slightly behind to the point that it was a detriment to my gaming. At least that's what I'm saying. Maybe I just suck. But yeah, I don't think I'd be playing any competitive multiplayer games on here anytime soon. It's just slightly too slow. Actually, that's kind of the experience I had with all of the action-oriented games. Like Tekken 7 is a fighting game that requires really quick button presses. And again, you can just tell it's slightly behind the experience you would get on a console. In terms of the actual streaming experience, it's really good. As long as your internet connection is stable, and mine was, you kind of just get a decent feed of the game as if you're streaming a YouTube video. So um, yeah, nothing to complain about there. But when I was playing games like uh, Devil May Cry 5 or even Forza, two really beautiful games. Devil May Cry 5 has a lot of cinematics as well. 
I felt like I was missing out on something. I was like, man, I wish I was watching this on a television um, with a powerful console running it because I just knew I was missing out on the full experience that the developers kind of intended. But here's the thing though, none of this actually annoys me that much because the service itself is still really good and being a, like less than a half a second behind in games where it doesn't really matter, you're getting the full experience in my opinion. Like when I played Civilization VI, I know it's kind of like a board game, you're, you just kind of take turns. So like I couldn't tell that there was any input lag if there was, there might not have been. Same with the retro game Curse of the Moon, which is the throwback to the 80s style of video games. If anything, that kind of felt more authentic because I remember playing Nintendo games where you were kind of uh, having to deal with input lag there and that was through a wired controller. So yeah, it really does seem like an experience where you kind of want to be going for the slower paced games. Look, it's still a preview and it's already performing way better than I kind of expected it to. So I'm really looking forward to when it actually comes out in Australia and I'll do a full run through then. But for now I can say I'm impressed, um, but also I'm going to stick to the slower paced games. Tech like this really excites me for the future. It technically works well enough now that you can get enough enjoyment out of it. And if you're not precious about frame rates or latency, you essentially have a really good gaming experience ready to go at a really low barrier to entry. I do not see this working for hardcore competitive multiplayer games where everything needs to be as fast and lag free as possible. But for slower or less competitive titles, any input lag you do experience is nearly unnoticeable. A lot of these games don't quite make sense when you're playing them on a mobile though. Microsoft are giving you some of their most graphically spectacular games, but streaming is capped at 1080p and you don't really get to see the high amount of detail and effort that went into building the game worlds on such a small screen. That does detract a little bit from the experience for me. I feel like when you're playing a blockbuster game, you want the big speakers and giant TV. Given the option, I'd probably stick to the simpler, less detailed games when playing on my phone. If playing blockbuster games on a phone puts you off though, don't worry because they are also releasing this on web browsers soon. So if your device runs a web browser, you can run Xbox games. I cannot wait for the inevitable video of someone playing Doom Eternal on a smart fridge. Get on it, internet. Well, guess what? I was just doing a last minute fact check and someone has done it. But as you can see, everything is in operational order. I really should have got my tripod and good camera for this. Also, it's the web version that's allowing them to get around the App Store on iPhone and iPad. So you'll be able to play it on those devices. It'll just be through a web browser. If you're keen on keeping up to date with Xbox Cloud Gaming, hit subscribe because I am gonna be following this very closely as it evolves. I think it's really gonna shake things up in how we consume and play video games as we move into the decade that is the 2020s. So I know what you're thinking, when can I actually get Xbox Cloud Gaming? Well, in Australia, it's uh, kind of just a vague early 2021, so it can't be too far off. But in the meantime, registrations are still open to join the preview. So if you really want to know what it's like to play Halo at the park, you can.